I think it's 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 really politically expedient for for Mitch McConnell to say let's move on and let's move on, especially when uh, the former twice impeached disgraced president um, it, it enjoys attacking Mitch McConnell. But the problem is that past will become prologue if we don't find out exactly what happened January. And 6th. we will. So it's not it's not time right we, now. We will we will find out. We, we must I, find we out. We will before find out. Moving on. We will find out. But I'm yeah. going to tell you, I live in California, not Washington D.C. Mm -hmm. And the American people do have other concerns that we ought to be thinking about I, and talking about. Respectfully, and Madam so, Secretary, I think well, the, let, I, me, let me finish mm -hmm. now, Sonny, because... Um, well, I think, I think it's, it's, it's really politically... So, that was Connelly's Rice last week on The View saying, you know what, it's time for us to move on. Hmm. Rolling Stone dropped this on the weekend. Several January 6th organizers say they met with several House Republican lawmakers leading up to the events of the deadly insurrection. An exclusive report with Rolling Stone, the organizers identified the members of Congress who allegedly took part in these conversations or were represented by senior staffers. Hmm. Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene of Georgia, Paul Gosar of Arizona, Lauren Boebert of Colorado, Madison Cawthorn of North Carolina, Andy Biggs of Arizona, Louis Gomer of Texas. The sources claim that Representative Gosar promised pardons for the organizer, organizers on several occasions. Democratic lawmakers chime in on the report and are calling for the expulsion of any congressional member involved in the events. This is what Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez tweeted. Any member of Congress who helped plot a terrorist attack on our nation's capital must be expelled. This was a terror attack. 138 injured, almost 10 dead. Those responsible remain a danger to our democracy, our country, and human life in the vicinity of our capital and beyond. Um, you know what, um, Congo? Um, the Republicans fought real hard not to have this, this uh, committee established. Um, Kevin McCarthy wanted to appoint, appoint his own folks. He wanted to put someone like Jim Jordan on here. They've been vigorous in their defense uh, against the likes of um, Donald Trump and the thugs associated with him, uh, folks like Matt Gates uh, as well. In fact, when they had the, um, the House discussion regarding um, a, uh, enforcing a subpoena against Steve Bannon, it, it, it was quite interesting to listen to the vigorous back and forth. Um, uh, and then also Republicans, remember Kevin McCarthy was real angry. Democrats, how dare you seek our phone records? Then, of course, Jordan, not really wanting to say how many times he talked to Donald Trump on January 6th. Listen. News. If you talk to the former president on January 6th, and you, you didn't give a clear answer, you said, I did, I did, I did, you, you, you said, and I quote, I've talked to the president so many, I can't remember all the days I've talked to him, but I've certainly talked to the president, end quote. The next day, on July 28th, you confirmed to Spectrum News that you spoke with the former president on January 6th. When yeah. asked by a Spectrum News reporter, Taylor Popolars, whether you spoke to the president before, during, or after the Capitol was attacked, you said, and I quote, I spoke with him that day after, I think after, I don't know if I spoke with him the, the morning in the morning or not. I just don't know. I have to get back to you. I don't, I don't know when those conversations happened, end quote. Yep. So my question is, you've had 84 days since that interview to go back and check the record. So when did you speak of with course. the former president on January 6th? Did you of talk course. to the former president before, during, or after the attack on the Capitol? Of course I've talked to the president. All three. Of course I've talked to the president. I've been clear about that. I talk to him all the time. Um, this is not about me, Mr. Chairman. I know you want to make it about me. You want to make it about uh, individuals, uh, other individuals. 
But this is about the lack of a proper security presence that day. That's what this committee, if this committee is going to do something that's worthwhile, that's what they should be investigating. Of course, I talked to the president. I talked to him that day. I've been clear about that. I don't recall the number of times, but it's not about me. I know you want to make it about that, no, I, but this is about the, why was it, how about this? Why wasn't the National Guard here that day, Mr. Chairman? Boy, they, they trying all they best to deflect on Congo. Oh my goodness, man. Let me calm myself. Look, these guys think they are so big and bad. And I'm just thinking, if the Rolling Stones was able to get this information, imagine what Congressman Benny Thompson and the January 6th committee have in terms of the treasure trove of information that they have and they are still getting about the corruption of these guys. Uh, Ocasio-Cortez is exactly correct. These guys need to be expelled, prosecuted, whatever needs to happen to them. They are traitors to this country. The biggest concern I have right now, and don't forget, Kevin McCarthy also threatened to go after the telecommunications companies if they get into power in the midterms for giving up these records. The main concern I have right now, right, really, is Roland Ro Ro Martin is Merrick Garland and how slow the Justice Department seems to be moving. Now, I know they can't have press conferences and give the public updates every single minute, but sometimes I just feel like Merrick Garland is acting more like a judge than a prosecutor to be, what, nine, ten months after the insurrection or whatever time we are right now, and there hasn't been major heads to roll metaphorically, it's, it's really problematic. And people like Steve Bannon and these others, they really believe that they can just run out the clock. And while the Justice Department needs to be going after these guys who are in, in there walking around with the Confederate flags and all of that, they need to go after these ringleaders, and they need to go after them hard, and they need to go after them right now because there's no other word to describe these guys than traitors. That is what they did. And right now, they're sitting walking around like everything is all cool. And they need to have the hammer dropped on them. Um, Brianna, to that particular point there, I mean, he, he's right. You trying to convince me it takes 10 months for a real arrest? They're still sitting here asking the public, hey, do you know who's in this photo right here? Uh, and it, it's sort of like it's timid uh, in terms of really holding these folks accountable. Let's, let, let's be real clear. The actions of the committee are completely different than a criminal investigation. The committee does not have to wait or take the precedent over the criminal investigation. Yeah, um, I mean, just as you said, from just going from Condi, right? Um, they know it's a lie. Um, they know the attack wasn't foreign. Um, but they won't say anything because donations are flying in. They're getting booked on Fox News. Um, and they're staying in Donald Trump's good graces. Um, it's disgusting. Um, but, you know, it, it's, it's, it's obvious that they won't drop the big lie or denounce the attack on the U.S. Capitol. Um, we've seen um, the deaths. We've seen um, the issue. So, I mean, the fact that they're taking this slow is 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 ter and it's ridiculous. But it's also more terrifying that there's literally uh, insurrectionists that are um, running for Congress. That you know, so we know that we have current member of Congress that has been you know one of the ringleaders in Trump's attempt to overturn election, and we're still at the same point. And we never thought the danger would be coming from inside the house. Um, but we're here. And so, I mean, it's it's something that needs to be addressed ASAP, especially as we're going into the midterms. Julian, uh, l listen to uh, this little pissant Matt Gates uh, out of Florida. To people who had not requested them, that Donald Trump would be sitting behind the resolute desk. Okay, but you don't think that there is, legally speaking, I know you're a lawyer because you went to the great law school, William Neary. Um, you, legally speaking, there was no election fraud or no election corruption. Do, no. do you, well, let's put it this way. Do you agree that 61 different federal and state courts, including eight judges that Donald Trump appointed himself to the federal bench, have rejected every claim of electoral well, I, corruption I just, or fraud that have been yeah, advanced? Do you I, agree with that? I, I don't. And the 
the reason is those claims are not evaluated because in many of the circumstances you reference, jurisdiction was the principal question. So I think it requires a review of the procedure. Do you have process. any case authority in the land of those 61 cases or any other cases where a court has determined that there was electoral corruption or electoral fraud that materially uh, affected the outcome of the election in any state in the no, union? No court. Do you have which, one? Which I believe is a real failure of the judiciary. I think our, the Article Three courts failed our country by not exercising more jurisdiction over those questions. Now, there's a difference in whether or not fraud existed and whether or not there's an adequate remedy. And I think also a number of those cases were kicked on remedies. Well, no court has said that fraud existed, and so there's no I, remedy because there's no violation, well, right, Mr. Right, Gates. Right, but you can't. There's no violation. There's no fraud. Decided that there was okay. no fraud if they didn't take up the question and review the facts okay. on jurisdiction or the, remedy. You know what? That might work on Steve Bannon's podcast, but that's not going to work in the Rules Committee it of the United like States House of Representatives. Here. I'm sorry, Mr. Gates. Forgive me. Woo. Woo. Um, Julian? Well, first of all, we've got to give high props to Jamie Raskin, Congressman Jamie Raskin. He's been doing a great job. And frankly, in the midst of personal tragedy, he's been doing a great job. Secondly, I don't know what's wrong with Condoleezza. Truly, truly, I do not. She was a mentee of uh, Colin Powell, the recently deceased Colin Powell, uh, who have been calling this thing out. You know, he said he could no longer be considered a Republican. Um, but she's sitting there talking about, well, we need to move on. No, we do do not need to move on. That You called a man a pissant. That was a compliment, Roland. I mean, pissants would be insulted to be in the room with him. That man is an idiot. And that's kind, too. What we have here is a Congress who conspired with insurrectionists. Some of them probably opened the door for them. But I'm not surprised. The Rolling Stone piece is excellent reporting. We learned a lot more than we knew. But many of us suspected that somehow those folks were able to bypass security. Mr. Gates wants to know how come there was not more security. The, the question he has to ask is, how did you get past security? You got past security with sticks and um, you beat security. That's how you got past security. And so hopefully, at some level, we're going to have the opportunity, and good for what they're doing, to have the opportunity to have this all laid out. But as it's all laid out, what's next? Because these folks, they have been emboldened, and there have been no consequences. There have been no consequences to the members of Congress who conspired. And there have to be consequences. Roland, you're absolutely right about Merrick Garland. He is moving like a judge. He's trying to be deliberate. But there is no deliberation when you see that stuff that we just showed on screen. There is no deliberation when you have people who essentially killed, you know, someone. Two suicides. Let's say injuries. This is absurd, but it's absurd with congressional concurrence. And that's the part that is so disgusting. Oh, back to that whole Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. Betty is saving big holiday shopping at Amazon. So now she's free to become... Bear Hug Betty. Settle in, kids. You'll be there a while. Ooh, where are you going? Time to be smart. Roland Martin's doing this every day. Oh, no punches! Thank you, Roland Martin, for always giving voice to the issues. Look for Roland Martin in the whirlwind, to quote Marcus Garvey again. The video looks phenomenal, so I'm really excited to see it on my big screen. We support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. See, this is the difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. I got to defer to the brilliance of Dr. Carr and to the brilliance of the Black Star Network. I am rolling with rolling all the way. Honored to be on a show that you own, a Black man. <laughs> On the show. Folks, Black Star Network is here. I'm real uh, revolutionary right now. Wow. Roland was amazing on that. Stay black. I love y'all. I can't commend you enough about this platform that you've created for us to be able to share who we are, what we're doing in the world, and the impact that we're having. Let's be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You can't be black on media and be scared. You dig?